All right, guys, so here I am at 4th and Moffett. You may recognize this building. This is one of my favorite buildings in all of Joplin, although it's in really sad condition right now. Um, there is a city ordinance that says the windows have to be boarded up, and they can't be open like this. It's... Uh, really tragic to see this building in this condition. Um, I've had a long history with this building uh, going all the way back uh, into the 90s when I had the opportunity to spend quite a bit of time in this building. Um, for a while I worked for the company that managed this building after it was vacant and so a long time after the rest of Joplin didn't get to have experiences with this building, I was lucky enough to be part of its part of its time. Um, in its current state, almost every piece of electrical, every piece of plumbing, every piece of the radiator, everything that's metal, everything that's valuable has been stripped out of this building by transients and thieves. Um, it's really tragic. Even these windows that are in such poor condition were installed after the building was vacant. So that's really sad to see them in this condition. Um, so a little bit about the history of this building. So it was built um, by Arthur Bendelari, who was a civil mining and engineer uh, from Canada. He was a vice president with Eagle Pitcher, and this building was built as his testament to Joplin's future. He knew that it was worth investing the $150,000 that it cost to build this building at that time. It was worth it was worth spending that because he knew Joplin was going to be something, and that this building was going to be part of it. Um, so in 1906, uh, in October is when it opened, and the Joplin Globe couldn't find enough great things to say about the building. They said that nothing more elegant, more stylish had ever ever been built in Joplin. It was a gem. It was one of a kind. And Mr. Bindelari, he was well known about town. Everybody liked him. He was quite the charmer. Um, he was very well known because he really liked to race. He had one of the first cars in Joplin, uh, one of the first Fords, actually. As you may know, we had a, a facility here that put Fords together in early days, but he had one of the very first cars, and he would race his car against anyone's horse and buggy any day of the week. And of course, eventually, his friends that lived um, here in Murfreesburg um, started buying cars and, and building houses and, and all sorts of great things. And so he really liked to race. So he named the building the Olivia, after his mother, who never actually got the opportunity to see the building. Um, it was decorated in Pompeian fashion, and so the lobby has a really cool... Oh, hello. The, the lobby has a really cool mosaic tile floor and a rotunda seat in the middle and it has murals on the walls and on the ceiling and and things like that it was it was very impressive um uh, the you could go back to the back and in the back there was an area that had a nice skylight and, and a pretty place to sit um and then there was a really nice polished oak staircase that was really a one-of-a-kind staircase um, that connected each of these floors. So the building is built in a U-shape, um, which was done to allow 
each apartment to have natural light from the majority, you know, from the most number of sides possible. And so, you know, some of these apartments, uh, there was like 30 something apartments, 31 apartments, I think. Um, they were all either one or two bedrooms, but some of them were as big as 2,000 square feet. So, um, you know, this was really like the who's who of Joplin that lived in this building during that time. Um, it had basically every modern convenience that you could ask for. It had a passenger elevator. It had a freight elevator. Um, it even had a restaurant with a kitchen on the fifth floor. And so right up there, you can see right there, um, that was their restaurant. And each table had its own electrical outlet so that it could have its own electric lamp. And the building was actually built before electric was available here in Joplin, but um, they kind of happened right about the same time. And so they were able to, right as the building was finished, hook it up to the electrical service. And each table had its own electric lamp. Uh, there was also a grill room up there where, which was this, this one right there. That room was the grill room and you could get like pulled pork sandwiches. Um, it was the closest thing Joplin really had to fast food and the rest. So you didn't have to be a resident of, of, uh, the Olivia to go there. And then also in the basement, they had like billiards and all kinds of other fun things. And then a smaller grill. They had a barber down there even. I mean, this is, this was like the coolest thing in 1906. Can you imagine, you know, cause the Connor wasn't here yet. And, you know, so this was, this was where it was at for sure. Um, Let's see, what else, what else is important to talk about? Um, okay, so in, right after, uh, right after the building opened, um, there was an explosion in the basement. One of the night watchmen, um, his name was Marvin Reynolds. He was in the basement and he was taking care of the cat. He was feeding the cat when the boiler exploded. And so it basically uh, blew the northeast corner, which is this front area here. It basically blew that um, apartment to pieces uh, from the inside. It like splintered the floorboards and, and tore the tore the furniture up and injured the people that were in that apartment sleeping. Um, but the, the night watchman, he was, he was badly injured and he was able to make it upstairs and he came to, um, the manager's apartment, which was, um, this one right here. It's all boarded up now. It used to be just open balcony. Um, that side used to be boarded up too, but now it's not. Um, it looks like they boarded it up on the inside, but I'm not really sure that that's holding quite so well either. Um, so Marvin Reynolds, he, he made it to, um, this manager's apartment and he said, tell Mr. Bendelari I didn't do it. And then he passed away. Um, but they determined that there was no major structural damage to the building when that happened. And so Bindalari was able to utilize his insurance coverage and put the building back together and reopen very quickly. Uh, they were open by December again. And for a long time, this was the height. This was the gym. This was, you know, the coolest place. Now, as you move forward in the future, um, there are some stories uh, of gangsters coming to Joplin um, and potentially staying in this building. 
There's not a whole lot of proof other than just the stories of old timers that have passed those down. Um, in by, by the time you move into the 1960s, 1970s, this building had moved kind of from the who's who of Joplin to the, well, just about anybody that's willing can have a place here. Um, and as you move into the 70s, it really got to be a building that needed to be repaired. Uh, it was in bad shape and was not attracting the best tenants. So, um, Joplin General Hospital was right over here across the street, um, where the, where the church is now. And, um, you could rent an apartment here pretty inexpensively. Actually, during that time, it got to be known as a place that was, you know, filled with drugs and people that lived on the fringe of society or, or, or you know, just absolute loners. And as you move into the 80s, you see the very first person that is starting to look at restoring this building. Um, somebody that's, you know, putting their love, blood, sweat, and tears into bringing back what, what it used to be. And, um, Honestly, this building probably wouldn't still be standing without the work that he did, and his name escapes me. It's going to come to me at like 2 o'clock in the morning. But um, he did considerable work to help prop up the foundation and make sure that it was good and solid, and um, a lot of work in the lobby to help make sure that it was in good condition. So... Um, the building continued to be available to rent, you know, by apartment. Some of the apartments were in better condition than others, and the owner during that time lived in the Phil Finning house, which is across the street over there. You can't see because it's starting to get dark, but um, unfortunately in 2006, the owner decided basically every apartment needed renovations and the easiest way to go ahead and do that is just to have the last couple of tenants move out and that way you didn't have to worry about like you know if he was painting if it would bother someone and as soon as the building was empty then the city said hey you know you need to bring this building up to code which changed that from a you know a twenty to thirty thousand dollar project to a several million dollar project. Um, it's sat empty since that day. It's been through a bunch of different owners since that time, and The current owner doesn't seem to have a whole lot of interest in in making something happen. I really had high hopes um, because it's owned by a well-known developer, but uh, I feel like at any point one of these balconies could just fall off the front of it. So I had the opportunity to film a zombie movie in this building, um, which was a lot of fun. We probably had 200 people total over multiple filming days dressed up in zombie. Oh, hello. Uh, dressed up as zombies running around the Olivia. It was super cool. Um, one of the things that was really crazy is that none of the footage from that was able to be recovered. Like, for some reason, it had this weird distortion in it, and we couldn't use hardly any of it. Um, the apartment is called the Olivia Apartment, and we are at 4th and Moffat right now. Um...
so a lot of people think that this is the most haunted location in Joplin and if there is a place that is the most haunted in Joplin I agree it's probably this building um, this is one of those places that you turn on a recorder and the question is how many voices are you hearing uh, it's so crazy you know there's so many stories of haunted things and haunted activity that have happened in this building um, one one thing that that jumps out is on the third floor I think it's on the third floor um, one time I took a group on a tour through the building and the floor is pretty dusty so um, you know you can kind of tell where people have been walking and out in the middle of a dust filled room there's one footprint or just just one just one footprint out in the middle no way that someone could have gotten out there no way so who knows um, you know people have have said that they see things moving in the windows sometimes especially at night it's probably homeless people <laughs> it's probably metal thieves but I'll tell you I've had the opportunity to be in this building alone at two o'clock in the morning and uh, it is terrifying so if if you believe in ghosts um, right here where the church is now used to be Joplin General Hospital and Joplin General Hospital was one of those places um, that was like an old-timey minor hospital where like you would get injured and they would come and hack your arm off with a hacksaw and then cauterize it with some hot metal um, it was it was a pretty pretty rough place and a lot of people died in Joplin General Hospital um, at least in the early days so when when um, Joplin General had some land donated they moved to 34th Street and became Oak Hill Hospital and then they donated the land from their hospital to the church here behind me who built um, their family life center uh, the people in the building at the time thought that they had put this um, giant cross here facing the Olivia's door um, as a as a message specifically to the people that lived in the building at the time but I had the opportunity to ask some of the church elders um, that were around when this construction happened and they said that they it was just a recommendation from the uh, from the architect and that they really hadn't thought about it as being a ministry to this building although a lot of the people in this building were who they were trying to minister to at that time so um, may have been kind of on purpose maybe subliminally on purpose something like that um, so a little bit later I will uh, live stream the zombie movie or what we were able to make from the footage that we that we recorded and post a link to the ebook that I wrote about this building so um, what I would love to see for the future is for the Joplin City Council to enforce the ordinances that are in place I would love to see this building either restored now or preserved in a way that it can be restored later it's so important 
This was Bindalari's testament to Joplin's future, and we can't lose it. So, <coughs> as many of you guys know, I regularly do haunted history tours through Murfreesburg and downtown, and I don't know that bringing large crowds together to learn about Joplin's history is the best idea um, in a COVID-19 world. So. I'm going to try to share parts of those tours with you guys as I can over the next few months. So um, I appreciate all of you guys watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night.